Hello everyone. Have you guys heard of Art Breeder? Maybe, maybe you have. Maybe it's been trending a little bit. Well, it's pretty cool actually. If you don't know, Art Breeder is a website that you can throw images into and use um, these sliders to change the scene into something completely different. Okay, that's kind of a vague introduction, but let's just get into this with some examples. Uh, they got some, uh, I guess, some presets here already, but so if I wanted to manipulate this image, I can uh, use these different sliders, and honestly, these sliders mean nothing to me, because I'm kind of just like, eh, whatever, what, like, what's chaos do? Like, who, who the hell knows where, what made it change? Like, what, what did it actually change? It's adding chaos to it and now it now it's a completely different like scene so i have no clue what this is doing uh even fog like i add fog but then the entire image changes so it's it's kind of weird oh snow actually worked um so it's kind of weird let's see what sunlight can we get okay we got sunlight but it also made it darker oh we got kind of a lake here what about if we add a river it was a completely different image now, basically. There's a lot of... Um, it, it can help generate ideas. And it can help um, get you started on, on something. But if you're audacious enough, you can completely just create art in here and post it, I guess. Um, I mean, look at all these different images that were created from it. Um from that original image from other users so like this is a this is a really cool image and uh the the artist in me is kind of like that's that's cool that's a great starting point but i couldn't i couldn't just take that image and post it online and be like hey look what i did even though you know it's i don't know it makes me a little worried about like how far this is going but it's completely chaotic in a sense though because you have no control over it so if you have a specific idea in mind that you want i don't know if this program is gonna gonna help you but if you don't have an idea and you just kind of want to generate an idea maybe this is a great program to get you started and that's what i did so i went to um over to my profile and um let's see here i started with this image Okay, I threw this image in the program, and then um, and then it, it it gave me this for some reason. Um, and but then I started playing around with these sliders, and uh, ultimately I ended up getting this image. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. I don't know where it got this from. If this is like some artist's painting, or like pieces of different artists' painting, or if it's all just generated through magic. I don't know, but it is a cool starting point, and while it's abstract in a sense, you can also kind of see this is a snow landscape with mountains, and it's got a bit of perspective in it. Um, you know, so these rocks are like falling off the mountain. You, I, I don't know, like it's it's not super clear, so there is a little bit of abstractness, but you can kind of make out. And for me, like. I was like, okay, I'm going to take this and run with it. And then, so, I ended up creating this image. Okay, so I went from here to here. And you can see everything that I changed along the way. So, it was a great starting point for me. And, um, you know, it's like, is it cheating or not? Who, who cares at this point? I mean, who knows? I mean, there's digital arts evolving so much as long as you're not like taking something from somebody else and then just claiming it as your own or even like just modifying it a little bit i mean since this was generated based on an image that i provided i i feel a little bit better painting over top of it but i couldn't just like take somebody else's painting and paint over top of it and then claim it for myself i mean that would just be it would be a douchebag right so we don't want to do that but it I'll at the same time I can't like fully take credit for it and say hey you know this is 
this is all me. No, I, I, I like to let people know that, hey, this this is what I started with, and this is, this is what I um, produce. So I want to talk about the process a little bit, uh, maybe help people understand how I got here. If you like the way this looks, stick around, and we're going to get into that. As we have established, I got this image from Art Breeder. And so let's go back. Let's go way back. And I'm sorry, guys. I did not do a time lapse of this. Um, I just got these still images. I hope that's okay with you guys because I'm going to be talking through it. Um, I would have recorded it, but everything just happened so fast. Like, I just, it was an experimental stage where I grabbed this image and I started painting over top of it. And before I knew it, I, I was, I had something that was looking really cool. So. Anyway, so let's let's see what the first one is. Um, yeah, so right right off the bat, let's uh, do some get get a little bit more saturation in there, a little bit more color. Uh, you can see pieces of photo right here and pieces of photo texture right here. This is basically I downloaded this uh, pack, big collection of different snow landscapes or, or in scenery. So I just went through here. I grabbed something really quick and uh, just started pasting in trying to establish a, a foreground here and add in a little bit more texture there in the background um, and then starting to starting to paint on things trying to fill things out a little bit better you see that I didn't really care for this this rock here just kind of falling off I wasn't going for that supernatural effect so I wanted to um, Let's just make sure. I've got ADD. I'm worried that I'm talking to myself. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to go for that supernatural effect. So we, we just trying to get that mountain in there. Um, so that's all I did there. And this is just this is, uh, nothing nothing too crazy here to start off with. Uh, here's some rock, very rough rock shapes um, to try to try to get some something here in the foreground. Because this is mostly just mid and background. Like, yeah, these are in the foreground. But there's nothing like... In the extreme foreground so that's that's what I was trying to do here and then uh, yeah so here we could do a little bit more coloring um, using different uh, overlay effects so I like to paint on one layer um, and then uh, you know you can change your brush mode to overlay and then you know I'm using a mouse right now so get some cool effects with uh, the overlay brush or or even um, it was probably linear dodge yeah there we go so you can kinda create some nice little atmosphere with that uh, with these different blend uh, brush blend modes so and this wall here <laughs> right here is funny because you know this is uh, this is I'm just re working really fast and just trying to get some results so I was just like I'm gonna take this piece and pop it over here and flip it and scale it up and rotate it you know kind of manipulated it in there and that's what I started with there and um, you can see the perspective on this it's something that I'm always kind of confused with like with mountains and stuff like my horizon line is somewhere like back here so since this is above that like it should be going this way but I have it going this way but it's also, it's an organic shape. So I guess it's okay to have a little bit of variety in there. But I think for the most part, maybe follow perspective. I mean, you can see I, I still kept it in there on the final stage. Um, maybe it would look better going down. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure these things out. All right. So next, um, let's see what happens next. Uh, mostly just a color correction here. Um, and then starting to get some of these more brush strokes in here, getting my own style in here, not just relying on the image that I started with. And um, color balance, uh, control B. You can see color balance here. This is the benefit of working on a single layer. I, I just, I really liked it. It's powerful. Um, so um, I can change like the different colors. Um, and I usually work in midtone. Sometimes I'll I'll go try out shadows and highlights and see see what that does. Um, and then yeah, so we can do that. And then you can also erase pieces that you don't want. So you can get a really cool variety of colors in there pretty quickly. 
um, and that's that looks like what I did here um, and then added this little cloud thing here trying to trying to show some depth in here get some perspective uh, really force that perspective a little bit more making it clear um, because you know it, it, this isn't totally clear so I'm trying to really get that trying to create a uh, a ground here for these mountains to sit on because I mean it's it gets a little gets a little hard to read there so I'm trying to fix that moving on uh, it looked like to me like like we were looking up because when they when you have um, have things going at an angle like that instead of straight up and down so that mean this means you're looking straight forward and this means you're looking up so those mountains look like like we're looking up but I didn't want the the viewer to feel like they're looking up so um, what in the world delete <laughs> all right so my next uh, step was to kind of fix those mountains to straighten them because they were being uh, they were uh, tilting a bit so um, did I lose something there? Who knows? Maybe, maybe it would have been cooler if, if the viewer was looking up, but I, I just wanted to, the viewer to look straight forward, so I fixed those. And that's my understanding of how perspective works. And then it looks like I added some more textures from photos here. Um, every so often, you know, if I'm getting bored with the design of things, I'll, I'll go find another photo and, and try to find a way to fit fit it in and I, I didn't like this mess here and I didn't fear, feel like figuring it out so I just placed a, a photo texture on it and yeah it started working pretty good and then the next step was to uh, start painting on top of it and you can see where I'm starting to paint right here and here and uh, maybe even these clouds here yeah trying to define some of these clouds letting them try to vanish into the background um, you know, because visually, you know, what I'm thinking about is here's my horizon line somewhere right there. I'm, it's, it's an organic landscape. So I'm just kind of roughing it in. I didn't have this on here, but in my mind, this is what I'm thinking about. Anything above this line should be kind of going in this direction. Um, but very loosely. So is what I'm, what I'm saying here, but so but as things get closer to this line they start to compress so you get very very more like uh, like this more detailed kind of noise in here and then you get broader strokes out here in the foreground because uh, you know the distance between here and here is significantly less than the distance between here and here so like from from here and here could be like miles for all I know. I don't know. It's I just know that it's it's a lot. But from here to here, it's like like an inch or something. Like it's not a lot. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about when I'm painting is uh, my perspective. All right, moving on. Here's a big jump. So uh, some more color correcting. You see how everything here in the foreground got bluer. Um, and then here in the background, it stayed a little, little more purplish. Uh, that was probably because I, I, uh, I did the color balance on one layer uh, for this, and I made it blue. And then I did the color balance on another layer uh, of another duplicate layer, made it purple, and then erased that. F so this stayed blue, and this was purple. Does that make sense? Hopefully, it's not that important, but just some minor color corrections there and then really trying to like figure out this mountain without throwing it in a photo here on the the left here add in a little bit more details over here and then of course the foreground so i, I really added like a, a like up in your face kind of foreground uh we can actually feel that this is kind of below our feet now and um maybe we're up a little higher than this guy so it's kind of going down a little bit and then try to establish some lighting here. Like here's the the sun kind of streaking through here. And it was around this point um, probably that I realized my lighting is just off here. Like if I have the sun somewhere over here behind this mountain, then that means that there should all this should be in shadow 
And I kind of have that there, but what about their cast shadows? Like, I felt like I needed to really establish a good cast shadow. Like, right here, I just have a really good cast shadow of this, and then it's kind of sweeping up here. But I didn't have anything here. So, I corrected that. So, big jump there. Big, uh, big uh, da -da improvement, I think. Um, adding that that darkness there to really show a sense of light there. Um, I was like, I can't have this cast shadow here and not have anything here. So we connected it all and kind of simplified it a bit. Um, and then I, I really started. Um, so you can see like he's, this is lesson in contrast. He's a dark figure. And so like having these darks here maybe competes a little bit so like if I just put snow there that was that was kind of a, a conscious choice there to create that checkerboard uh, kind of effect chessboard maybe uh, where you have lights against dark so that they, the silhouette of that character now stands out a lot better um, and you can see that's what I did for this too I, I just wanted to brighten that up so that he could that silhouette looks really really clean the way I did this shadow this, this is kind of a technique that I use a lot so I duplicate uh, the layer um, and then I hit control U and I bring my shadows down or bring my likeness down and this took a few tries uh, to get it right but this is this is a great way to add in a sense of lighting is you just erase what you don't want and you can use a layer mask or, or whatever you want so, so it's a little non-destructive but if I'm trying to establish a shadow here for these mountains I can erase all this out and that's a that's a great way to quickly to see and add in this effect and then I'll I don't want this to be any darker than the one that I added, so I can erase that out. And then through some tweaking, you know, I probably added some more blues to it. And then, uh, yeah, I slowly started trying to blend that in. Um, and then, you know, I got this. And uh, and it helps for up here, too, because I really showed off uh, where the sun was hitting on these mountains a little bit better. So... It was it was a difficult choice to actually make because I was like, but I worked so hard on all this stuff. Not really. I just threw in a bunch of photos. I'm being lazy, but I was like, I don't want to get rid of all this. Um, so, but ultimately, I needed to do something to get that to get that uh, cast shadow in there somehow. And since it's right there, I felt like like it wouldn't be such a a long one. Um, and this mountain, who knows how big this mountain is, so I can make it as long as I want for the composition. All right, and then uh, what, was there anything else? Just some, just some minor painting um, touch-ups. Added a snow effect. The snow is pretty easy. So, um, well, it's easy because I have this brush called Air Particles, and I don't know if I paid for this or if it come came in some uh, pack. Or where where the hell I got it from, but you can find particle uh, brushes out there. I mean, as long as they do something like that, it doesn't have to be exactly like that. You should be good. But they're all over the place, so just Google like particle brush. And so you add some particle effects, some kind of scatter. You could even just paint these in with a with a uh, a, a small brush if if you want. You know, I don't have my stylus right now, but you could do something like that it doesn't matter because what we're gonna do is we're gonna blur motion blur maybe add a little bit of an angle on it and kind of stretch it out look at that wow is that cool it's really cool that a simple effect such as like particles like i try to add some kind of particles like rain or or like if uh ambers of, of from the fire or whatever like sparks Anytime you can add something like that into your piece, it's just, it creates a sense of, you know, atmosphere. Or like even birds. So, it's it's really neat. So, this is uh, the, the version that I ended up with. 
and then just add in a signature. Call it a day. And, um, oh, and then the final image right here would be a, uh, a sharpen effect. So just filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, and then um, kind of play around with the sliders there a little bit. You can see what it does. It, it just makes everything sharp. And sometimes I'll erase the background from that, and so the background stays blurry. It doesn't look like I did that there because I was going for more of a grunge effect here. So um, the character, I didn't draw him. I found uh, I have a... Um, a character that I used that I just brought in and then um, then I painted over top to, to get the lighting and uh, sh the uh, shadows and everything and added a little bit of snow stuff on him um, so I didn't even do that it, <laughs> and even this the footprints here uh, this is from a from a photograph look oh my god how embarrassing you don't want that do you cover it up don't let people see you can do you guys see that it's the the freaking uh, watermark from the photo. Just, I'm not selling this painting. I'm not making any money off of it. So, you know, sometimes I steal photos with watermarks on them. And you definitely, you definitely want to get rid of those if you're gonna. Like, I feel like it's okay to grab an image as long as you're using it as like as a starting point. But then you really gotta. You gotta cover that up because then you just look like a schmuck. That's embarrassing. Oh well, who cares? If you're having a hard time figuring out what to start on, you know, you don't always have to make something from scratch. The important thing here is that you're you're working and you're doing paintings and you're and you're trying. And I think Art Breeder, while it did create a a giant like starting point for me and it's something that I don't want to use all the time because then I might become dependent on it and we still want to create like original com concepts uh, from our mind and um, but if you're in a rut and you need help with something uh, to get started art breeder it, it was kind of neat and I recommend starting with your own photo uh, as opposed to somebody else's uh, just because I don't, I don't know why. It, it really doesn't matter, I guess. Um, but it did. It also did establish perspective, too, which kind of helped me um, see how things work. Even though this is abstract, it does have perspective in it. So that's... I think that can be helpful for, for beginners or even, even you know, uh, people that's been doing this for a while, like me, um, where you can have that established already and you can gotta get a better sense because when I create things from my head they look more like this and that's I mean I think this is cool uh, cool painting but I, I don't know I think this I would have never created something like this on my own if I didn't have that starting point um, so AI art man it can it can help improve your paintings uh, just don't become too dependent on it and don't like just use the sliders create an image and then post and be like look what i made because that's you didn't make that you just you just made it you just slid a bunch of sliders <laughs> so you just slid a bunch of sliders isn't that what i do just hit a button anyways i guess i'm having a hard time ending this so i think we'll just end it all right guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one